Hello, everyone, and good morning, and welcome to Wow Wednesday. I am your host, Nancy Matthews, one of the founders of Women's Prosperity Network, and we've been bringing you this midweek boost of motivation, education, and inspiration since 2009. And I want to be sharing today, I've, I've had a lot of questions recently and been seeing a lot of posts on social media, people feeling stressed out, frustrated, overwhelmed, and like pulling your hair out. There's not enough time to do all the things that I need to get done, want to get done. Like, how do I make it all happen? So today, what I'm here to do is to share with you the time mastery techniques tools and mindset that I've used ever since I was a single mom uh, working in a law firm and I had a brand new baby. I was all by myself. I had a brand new baby and I had to figure out how to get the kid ready, how to get myself ready, how to deal with it when the kid spit up on you after you got dressed and you were ready to walk out the door. Can you relate to that? <laughs> if you're a mom in the house, I bet you can. And to be able to do all of that and still feel um, peace and ease and grace, like one of the biggest things about time management is how we deal with the stuff that comes up. So today I'm going to be sharing this teaching. So grab a pen and a paper if you can, or take notes on your phone if you're one of the cool kids and you can thumb, thumb right. <laughs> and uh we're going to dive in to time mastery, and I want to cover three major areas for you today. So number one is how you can reclaim time that's being stolen from you, and you don't even realize it. Number two, we're going to talk about, as business owners, how do you know how much time to spend on each of the necessary functions of a business. And this is a really, really important piece of the puzzle, especially as technology continues to emerge and we spend, we're spending time getting to know chat GPT or other tools that we can use and we're attending classes and we want to learn and grow. And you got to really be mindful of where you're putting your time and attention and your energy to ensure that you are consistently operating in the zones of the functions of a business that are designed to keep it profitable as well as productive and enjoyable. So we're going to talk about that. And then the third piece we want to talk about is how to create harmony between life and work. And I don't believe in trying to achieve balance because life isn't balance. You know, sometimes you have more of one thing and less of another. It's about finding harmony and being in the ebb and flow of it all. So as we go through our teaching today on time mastery, when you have a question, feel free to put it in the chat and I will go ahead at certain points in time. I'm going to open up for questions and comments along the way. And then of course, we'll open up uh, at the end to, to hear everybody's insights, questions, tips and tools. You may have even more because I'm always looking to advance and enhance my skills as it relates to time mastery. So delighted that you're here and let's jump right in. So when it comes to time mastery, the first place we want to start is in our relationship with time. There's lots of courses, conversations, discussions, and teachings about reframing your relationship with money. Like we all know that we have limiting beliefs about money or we used to anyway, right? <laughs> and that that's something that you wanna clear and clean and get through those blocks over. But do you ever pause for just a moment to consider what are your limiting beliefs around time? So curious, what are some of the common phrases that you hear when people feel rushed or they think they don't have enough time. So what are some of those? And if you would put the comments for me either on Facebook or here in the chat. So what are the most common cliches around time? So let's let me get going here. So I'm going to be juggling as the tech person and as <laughs> everything else here. So I'd love to hear in the chat, what are some of the common cliches around time. And I'll, and I'll give you, you know, a good one. Alexandra, thank you very much. 
I don't have time. I'll do that this afternoon. I never have enough time. You ever hear yourself saying things like that? Rome wasn't built in a day, right? It's built brick by brick. Brick. How about this one? And I just, I all want you to close your eyes if you can, but if you're driving, don't. Close your eyes for a moment and say these words. I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. Whoo, sends shivers up my spine. Right? That is something that too many people are saying. I know I heard my mother say it time and time again. Um, how about this one? I'm busier than a one arm paper hanger. Again, conjuring up all of these thoughts and feelings and this energy around money, which is part of your belief system, like the belief system that's underneath those types of cliches. I'll never have enough time. I'm so busy. I don't know how I'll get it all done. That is sucking your energy initially, which prevents you from being productive in that next instance. So the first thing I want us all to do is take a look at and become aware and observant. What is your language around time? And are you saying things like, I'm running around with a ch like a chicken with my head cut off. I never have enough time. I'll, I, I'll never get it all done. Like if that's the energy that in the belief around time that you're bringing to your day-to-day -day life, you are certain to be creating even more stress and overwhelm in your existence. So let me share with you one of my favorite techniques. When I too can feel squeezed, like you feel squeezed, right? When you don't have enough time. So one of the things that I use to reclaim stolen time is rather than rushing through everything, if even if I wake up five or 10 minutes late, I know for me that if I start rushing, 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 I end up stubbing my toe, knocking over the coffee, getting in the door, making a wrong turn because I'm not being calm and present in my experience. So when you feel that stress and overwhelm and you feel squeezed that there's not enough time, pause just for a moment. You got to have an awareness that that's what the vibration and energy and the beliefs is like. You're in that space of thinking, I don't have enough time. So in that moment, be observant. And then use these words. I get everything done with grace and ease. Or time expands for me. Time always expands for me. And this happens to me over and over and over again. So I'll, I'll give you an example. Just this past weekend, I, uh, I'm having a party at my house in a couple of weeks. And uh, over the last couple of weeks we've had tons of rain so the weeds are popping up and I'm having all these people at my house so I needed to do some weeding so I planned on Saturday morning that I was going to wake up I was going to get outside I was going to start weeding and I looked around the house and I saw the atrium needed the backyard and the concrete the weeds are coming up all over the place and as I looked around on Saturday morning I thought to myself I really don't like doing this can I just hire somebody to do this for me? And I'll be giving back to the to the economy. I'll be contributing to someone else's life because if their job is to pull up weeds, chances are they could really use some extra cash or an extra job. So I go on my phone in the morning and I'm looking for a weed person to come over and I, I don't like to use chemicals. So it has to be pulled and I don't want to do all of that, right? So uh, I don't find anything on my phone but I go back in, I'm drinking my coffee, and I'm thinking about how am I going to find somebody to do these weeds so I don't have to do it. Now, notice this shift of clearing up an hour to two hours of my time. What else could I be doing with that? So I'm reclaiming time that was stolen for me. Now, let me tell you this. If you enjoy pulling weeds, go for it. I do not. It's not a thing I really enjoy. So it's not the highest and best use of my time. So about 15 minutes after I have this revelation, my doorbell rings and it's my lawn service person who I was going to call but hadn't had a chance to yet said, would you like any special jobs done today? So because 
I chose to step into this philosophy that time expands for me. Everything's always working out in my favor. I hired this person and for $40, they did all of the weeding, giving me back a minimum of two hours of time and lots of joy. So consider what is that energy that you're bringing to the tasks that you're needing to do or wanting to do? Where can you delegate some things that you don't have to be doing? So for example, if you are still cleaning your own house, is that the highest and best use of your time? I have not cleaned my own house in probably 20 years because it's not something I enjoy and it's not the best use of my time. So reclaim time that's being stolen from you because you're just not thinking in a way of how, what is the highest and best use of my time. Reframe your language as it relates to time and notice and become aware if you're saying things like, I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. I'm so busy. I'll never have enough time. I'll never get it all done. Like when we're in that energy, that lower limbic brain, we cannot creatively think from the prefrontal cortex for the solutions that we need. So a couple of tips right off the bat. Second thing, as it relates to reframing your relationship with time. And it's an adjustment, again, in awareness and the use of language. So when you notice you're saying, I need to do something or I have to do something, and we all know we never should should on ourselves or other people, and I realize I just said don't sh you shouldn't should on yourself. Um, when you're using that language, oh, I need to call this client. I need to send an email. I have to do something. What's the energy that you're bringing with that? So if you're bringing a, a sense of obligation, I have to, like if there's this thing I've got to do that I really don't want to, if you are bringing that energy to your task, it's going to take longer. And I want you to try this on. When you notice you're using that language about I need to or I have to, create a switch and connect with, and let, let's use email because I know that's the bane of many people's existence and the most, the least enjoyable task of running your business is checking your email. And I get probably 500 to 700 emails every single day. So that could feel overwhelming, but I don't let it. I think about my email inbox as market research, as the way that I get to connect with the people that I care about, my clients and my customers. I see my inbox as opportunities for advancement. So to me, it's like opening up this treasure chest every day. What am I going to discover in here now? So when you can tie the task that may be a little frustrating for you um, or not enjoyable, when you can tie it, to the end result that it brings, it'll make all the difference. Let's talk about bookkeeping and numbers. I know too, yesterday was tax day. Many of you don't enjoy doing bookkeeping and numbers, but I know Barbara Johnson does, the heart-centered accountant. So you may wanna get with her and think about this, entering your information in your QuickBooks account or on your Excel spreadsheet or balancing your checkbook. That lets you know the difference you're making for people because money is simply a measurement, one of the many measurements that we have. So reframe your relationship with time and here are the ways that you will reclaim lost and stolen time. Uh, I've got several tips on these plus some other resources and, and support for you today. So uh, at the end of our session today, I'm going to let you know how you can get my tried and true time mastery system. And it's three videos and some worksheets. They're all easy to go through because I know I don't have time to do that. Could be popping up, but I promise you making the time to create more time for yourself will pay off in the long run. So Susan's here and I'm sure she'll be able to tell you in a few minutes how you can grab that. So first, reframe your relationship with time to reclaim time that's being stolen from you and you don't even realize it. I'm going to pop in another one under this one because it's so, so important. And it has to do with actually bringing someone new into your life or your business that will help you and support you to show up as what I like to call a drama monitor. 
So think about it for a moment when drama stirs up and this one's saying this and that one's saying that. And then you're thinking about it for 12 days while it's going on, da, 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 like all of that drama swirl. How much time are you spending on it? How much time are you spending in fear, worry, doubt? Uh, I heard someone say the other day that um, depression is when you're stuck thinking about the past. Fear and anxiety are when you're thinking about the future. But when you're in the present, it's where you have the power to move forward productively. So bring someone into your life, and this could be a friend, a partner, uh, your own little guardian angel that you bring in, to serve as your drama monitor. And when you notice that you're dwelling on the past or projecting into the future or feeling anxious in any way, just observe, am I being fully present or not? And this is another way for you to clear up time that's being sucked away from you and you don't even realize it because attention energy goes where attention flows and if you're putting your attention on those your energy is going to go there you're not going to get the things that are on your to-do list to done that you wanted to do when you woke up in the morning so bring in a drama monitor and just really observe where your attention is going where your energy is going and this is not to say that you want to deny feelings of worry, doubt, or angst, or um, conflict that you need to resolve. I'm not at all saying to ignore it. I'm suggesting let's let's take the bull by the horns and, and meet it head on. And if you notice you're feeling this, say, ha, why is it that I'm feeling so stressed and anxious right now? Pull out a journal, start writing it down, and get to the root of it rather than allowing it to just swirl inside your head. And I want you to think about that. You've had those days where thoughts are just all over the place, right? And then it's swirling and swirling and swirling. If you've got all that stuff swirling inside your head, there's no space for creativity. There's no space for solutions. So bring a drama monitor into your life and ask your people closest to you, Hey, if you notice me starting to spin out or if you see me talking about the same thing, you know, more than twice or more than three times, just let me know. I'm giving you permission to help me get out of this swirl of drama that is sucking too much of my time and too much of my energy. And I want to say a personal thank you to my sister, Susan, who has been my drama monitor for so many years. And keep up the good work, Susan. <laughs> All right. So uh, we, we talked a lot about reclaiming stolen time. And, and again, I'm going to encourage you all to, I put a bundle together. It's just $11 and it's three of my most powerful trainings in this whole time management system. So I encourage you to grab it because uh, my desire is for all of you to finally have an easy way to overcome the challenges that you deal with as it relates to time that have been perpetuating. So um, Susan will put the link in the chat and you can grab that in a little bit. All right, so let's move on to this next area. And this is business mastery for entrepreneurs, business time mastery. Now, one of the things that I hear way too often from our entrepreneur clients and members in our community is that I want more sales. So if you're someone who wants more sales, go ahead and put it in the chat or put it into um, the comments on Facebook. If you would like more sales, go ahead and write it down. Yes, I want more sales. Yes, I want more sales. Of course, we want more sales because we want to be serving more people. The biggest challenge I see most entrepreneurs going through is that they're not spending the proportionate amount of time on the functions of the business designed to produce sales. Now, those of you who coach me, coach with me, or those of you who've heard me speak before, you're going to know the answer to this one. So what is the fastest path to more cash and serving more customers? What is the one activity that will bring you more cash and more customers, close more sales into your account? Uh, yeah, more conversations. Yes, thank you, Darlene. Thank you, thank you. Phone calls, Zoom calls, 
actually connecting with people, like we used to say belly to belly, and now it's screen to screen. So it can be overwhelming and confusing on how you're supposed to spend your time in the business, especially many of us, myself included, came out of a corporate environment. Now we're in a business for ourselves and I'm supposed to know all the things I'm, I need to do to keep my business running and operating. I tell you, I didn't know that. When I first went into business for myself back in um, 2002, so I've been at this full-time entrepreneur game quite a long time. Uh, when I went into business for myself, I rented an office, I got a new computer, I got a file cabinet, didn't have anything to put in the file cabinet, but I knew I would one day, and got myself all set up, and then I sat at my desk. Because I didn't know what the functions of a business were. I didn't understand what I was supposed to do. And quite frankly, if I look back on it, I probably had some fears and lack of confidence. And I wasn't sure if it was going to be successful. I had dumped all my money into this first venture. And I was still a single mom. And I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. So what I did, because I wasn't clear, is in the shopping center where my office was, was a Blockbuster video store. Who remembers Blockbuster? Yeah. So I invented, just want you to all know, I invented binge watching because not knowing what to do in my business, not having any customers to serve, I walked down in the strip mall, went to Blockbuster and binge watched the entire series of The Sopranos. Remember, you used to be able to rent all the videos and everything. So I invented binge watching, just so you all know, everybody's doing it now. What a trendsetter I get to be. But I stopped binge watching when I figured out where it is that I need to be spending my time and attention so that my business grows. So get a piece of paper down, uh, a piece of paper and a pen so that we can go ahead and let me give you these numbers. And I'm going to make sure that I get them right for you. So give me one moment and let me pull this up. There we go. All right. So the functions of a business that you want to make sure that you are consistently doing are sales, as we were just talking about. Now, let me let me be clear. Sales is actually speaking with someone and having a conversation about the programs, products, and services that you offer. Sales is not just sending an email, just posting on social media. Email and posting on social media are marketing activities. So that's another one of the functions of a business. So you've got sales, you've got marketing, you have creation process, you know, creating the content that you're going to share for your marketing. So that's another function of your business. Another function is client fulfillment. And then the final one is mentoring and measuring. So you want to take all five of these. So I'll, I'll, I'll list them again. And for those of you that get the Time Mastery Bundle, I'm going to go deep into this for you. So um, sales, marketing, mentoring and measuring, creative time, and client fulfillment. Now, the next thing to do to ensure that your business is operating profitably and productively and consistently growing and moving forward is to spend certain amounts of percentages of time in each of these areas. And if I had to guess, if all of you were to do a time study, well, maybe not all of you, 95% of you were to do a time study this week and next week, you would find that you're probably spending, hmm, I would say, 50% of your time on marketing, thinking it's sales, but it's not. So you're spending more time on social media. Maybe you're doing research and doing copy creation, but you're never actually having conversations with people to get out there. And that has to do with your mindset and building your confidence and all those other pieces, right? So let me give you the percentages for each one of these. And if you were, and I did this in percentages because some of you are working a 40-hour week, some of you are working a 20-hour week, and some of you are working a 50 or 60-hour week. And whichever the number of total hours in your week that you're doing, and I do recommend 
try to do a 40 hour work week max if you can, because if you're working 50, 60, 70 hours a week, you're, you're, you're missing out on that harmony, that life work harmony that I was talking about. So we'll, we'll touch on that in a moment, but let me give you these percentages. So sales, oh, sales is over here. Okay. Sales, 25% of your time should be spent in sales activity. And once again, sales activities are telephone conversations where you're actually speaking with someone or doing follow-up phone calls or delivering presentations about your offerings that include some kind of invitation or call to action. So 25% of your time on actual sales activities. Next, we'll go to marketing. And I recommend that you spend 20% of your time on marketing activities. Marketing activities is networking. So take a look at how often are you going to networking events and how much time are you spending every single week in networking activities. Um, it includes your marketing is your email, marketing is your social media, going to trade shows, pe passing out flyers. All of that is 20% of your time for marketing. Next, we'll talk about um, uh, content creation. And I recommend 20% there as well. And let me say this, sometimes in some weeks, you may spend a little bit more on content creation so that you can do more on marketing the following week. So you can adjust those, but use these as a guideline. 20% of your time on content creation. 25% of your time on client fulfillment. Client fulfillment is actually delivering the services that people have paid you for. So like for me, for example, my client fulfillment is delivering my group coaching programs, my one-on-one -on -one clients. Uh, I have a couple of clients that I serve as a marketing director for, so client fulfillment goes under that. The last piece is your planning, your learning, and your mentoring. And I recommend that you do 10% here. So we've got 25% for sales conversations, 20% on marketing, 20% for content creation, 25% on client fulfillment, and then 10% for uh, planning, learning, and mentoring. So jot that down. I know I went through kind of quick, and I, I encourage all of you to get this Time Mastery Bundle that I put together for you and apply it to your systems. And now here's the last piece, and then we're going to open up for some questions and comments and uh, insights and ahas. So the last piece, as it relates to creating and sustaining life work harmony, is I really, really want you to schedule everything. So I use Google Calendar. And I use a system called block scheduling. So those five functions of a business I just told you about, those are actually things I block out in my schedule so that I know every single week I am putting enough attention on each of those things because it's so easy to go down a rabbit hole. Uh, and, you know, how much extra time did we all spend on chat GPT or the latest and greatest marketing system that came up, right? We're all, it's easy to get sucked in and not be as productive as we want. So use block scheduling. And what that means block scheduling is you are pre-planning in advance where you're going to put your time and attention for the week. Uh, when you get the time mastery system, I guide you even further in block scheduling and how you set it up using a calendar and all that good stuff. Um, so take these percentages that I just gave you and plug them into your calendar. Now, a couple of things. With block scheduling, not only do I want you to put all your work activities in there, I want you to put your life activities in there. I want you to put in the days you're going to exercise. Like I do yoga um, twice a week and I go to the gym three times a week or whatever that is, put it in your calendar. So it's there because if you don't write it down, something else is going to pull you off course. So write down your self care time, write down, block off in your calendar when you're spending time with your family. Too many entrepreneurs 
are so busy working, 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 like scurrying like little rats that they're feeling like they always have to be working. And that's not good for you. And it's not good for your friends and your family and your relationships. So actually block off the times you're going to be working. And if it's Wednesday night and it's time to sit down and have dinner or watch TV with the family or watch a movie, don't sit there with your computer on your lap thinking, oh, I just got to get this done. No, it's again, my being fully present. And when you take the time to block everything off, it allows you to be fully present in each thing. So block off not only your business functions, but block off the things for your life. Block off that on Saturdays, you're going to take off or Sundays or Friday nights or whatever it is to build in the things that bring you joy and refill your cup and actually put them in the calendar. And remember this. You're going to sit down and you're going to start to work with this block scheduling system and you're going to start to feel a little squeeze like I talked about before. But trust me and just give it a shot. And remember, oh, yeah, Nancy said I might feel squeezed like this. Oh, but she also said time expands for me. And when you follow this system, when you give yourself permission to step up and step out in this fashion, to become the master of your time instead of time mastering you and becoming a slave to all of these things, time will expand for you. And you'll find that thing on your to-do list that maybe wasn't that important to get done, or you'll find ways to reclaim stolen time by delegating or finding someone who loves to pull weeds to come and do it for you or someone who needs to earn some money to come and clean your house and they take pride in it they love to do it and what can you do with that two hours maybe make some sales calls i don't know just a suggestion and that'll bring you more cash it'll bring you closer to the people that you want to be with. All right, I'm going to open up for questions. So let me get all of that technology happening. And Miss Susan, oh, she's already got it in the chat. Thank you, Susan. So uh, for everyone who is here on the phone, the link you want to go to is womensprosperitynetwork.com forward slash master time. And that's all one word. So womensprosperitynetwork.com forward slash master time. And what you're going to get there are three modules and worksheets. So this this is really a robust bundle that I put together for you because when you master your time, you become the master of your own life. And yes, things are going to come up, but with systems and with these systems and structures in place, it's going to allow you to handle them with grace and ease. So the three things that I have for you in that bundle Number one is, is something I call stop the clock time management. And it's that first piece I talked about th this morning. And forgive me if I'm not looking at you because I'm making sure that I get it set up for everybody to share in just a moment. So I'm almost there. Um, so the first module that you're going to get is called stop the clock time management. And that's going to take you into a deeper dive of how to reclaim stolen time, how to reframe your relationship with time. I give you lots of language um, triggers that you can be looking for. I also get to go deeper into the drama monitor and actually how to actually put that into place in your life so that it can save you time uh, and let you be more productive. The second is this business time, business success time mastery. And what I've done in that teaching is I'm giving you a graph that shows you what each of these percentages are, as well as how to change the number of hours you're doing in each thing, uh, depending upon how many hours you work. And, and my, my subset, uh, my actually asterisk, that's what it is, an asterisk on that, is that for those of you who have team members that are doing some of those functions of the business, you're going to adjust your time by working with your team members. And I go into this in that training as well. So it's for um, starting off entrepreneurs or solo entrepreneurs as well as teams. So you'll see how to adjust things accord accordingly. Um, the third module is something I call devices and time devices, things to use so that you can consistently 
B, making sure that your relationship with time is staying neat and clean and tidy in, in the most productive way. And one of the things that I find is you're going to hear things today. You're going to put them into place. And then, I don't know, a month might go by, two months might go by, and then you'll hear someone say something and like, oh, yeah, I used to do that. So these devices that I'm talking about in the third module are ways for you to lock in and continue consistency with your new habits and your new relationship with time. So go to womensprosperitynetwork.com forward slash master time, all one word, all lowercase. And now I'm happy to take your questions uh, or comments. So if you're on your phone, you can hit star six. If you're here with us on the Zoom, you can simply unmute yourself and I'll call on you in a moment. And if you're with us on Facebook, put your question in the comments and we'll bring them. So let's start with Alexandra. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Oh, no, I... I don't have a question, but thank you. I just ordered it. I'm excited. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> it's um, I'm so glad that you're taking advantage of this. And you and I have known each other, gosh, 15, 16 years, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah, we offer great value. So you're definitely a trusted mentor. <laughs> My pleasure and my purpose. And um, I trust that going through these modules, because you've probably heard some of these teachings from me before, Mm -hmm. um, since we know each other 15 years. (laughs) (laughs) And it's kind of like I said a minute ago, it's like, oh, yeah, I used to do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. That works really well. Um, So kudos to you for taking action. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's go next to Peg Duchesne. Well, good morning, Nancy. Just like Alexander, I've only known you about 15 or 16 years now. And so much value. And I'm looking at this bundle. It's, um, you know, talk about a no-brainer, $11 investment. You spend that in two days at Starbucks or Dunkin' or wherever you go. So, and I know it. some of it might be repetitive, but some of it is reinforcing the good habits and just the reminder. And knowing that other WPN sisters will be doing this as well, it'll help us all keep each other on track and accountable. And Good job. Yes. Yeah. So, so you can imagine what we're going to talk about in, in probably about two weeks time at Momentum. You think? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I want to make sure everybody gets the opportunity to implement all of this um, for for your benefit. And and um, so Peg, thank you uh, for you know staying in the game, playing full out the way that you do, and all the value you bring. My pleasure, Nancy. I always love what you provide for us. Thanks. It's a great value packed bundle, as I said in the chat. There you go. Grab it now. Go to womensprosperitynetwork.com forward slash master time. Um, All right. So what other questions, comments? I'm glad to see so many of you are jumping in and and taking advantage of the special that we put together for you. Um, uh, Let's dive in. So Carol Frankham, did you have a question or a comment? Uh, I got to, can you hear me? I can. Good morning. Oh, good. (laughs) Uh, Listen, I am blown over with this. That's really not the right words. I'm not quite sure what they are. What you have given me today is what I have needed Mm. for a while, not a long, long while, because I'm relatively new. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Speechless. I got you speechless. Okay. And that's that's hard. so good and and um, I'm so glad that you were inspired to come this morning and especially starting out as a newer entrepreneur because like I said the reason I created the business success time mastery is where am I supposed to spend my time what's the right next thing for me to do and if you follow the guidelines that I've given you um, you'll be able to set up a sustaining business for success and let me let me drop this in um, since you mentioned it Um, It could be, so I say 25% of your time on sales activity and 25% on client fulfillment. Well, somebody may say, well, I'm just starting out. What if I don't have that many clients yet? Okay, perfect. 
what we want to do is use that 25% that you would have spent on um, client fulfillment in either, and I would actually divide the time up between marketing and sales activities, because those two activities are going to get you the cash and the clients in the door the fastest. So um, for anyone who's starting out, if you don't have 25% of your time in a 40-hour week would be 10 hours. If you don't have 10 hours yet of client fulfillment, then what I would do is take that time and apportion it to sales and marketing activities. So, Carol, glad that this was beneficial for you today and that you're here. So keep me posted on how it works for you. All right, let's go. I see a hand up, but I can't tell who it is. It is um, Peg Duchesne had her hand up. I see another one. If oh, There it is. Um, bah, bah, bah. No, I can't tell who it is. So if you want to talk. Oh, it's name. I, hello, now. it's Sarah Yeruda. Now I see them. Pastor Darlene. Can you hear me? Yes. Darlene, is that you? Yeah, yeah, that's me. But um, I think somebody else was on the phone that was talking. I, they can go first if they if they're uh, okay. wanting. To. Um, this is Sherry Rudolph. Can you hear me? Hey, Sherry. We've been hanging out for fifteen years as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I got something on all of them because I was like one of the first. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think so. Yeah, right when you guys started. So anyway, um. I wanted to first of all uh, tell you how much the uh, presentation, um, how much the presentation involved, uh, how much the presentation that you shared with us today was so valuable. As I try not to be a procrastinator, I don't call myself a procrastinator, but this is really, I can see how this can really help me. I would definitely be investing in the bundle and the, um, the presentation was just awesome and the, and the uh, information was invaluable. Oh, I'm so glad, Sherry. So, so glad to hear it. Um, again, I, I love that you're picking up on it. I'm, I'm doing a lot of these things already. And successful business owners like you, like me, how can I just get another little bit of an edge, right? Just a little bit right. of an edge and create so much more for all of us. So kudos to you. Um, and, yeah. and I'm going to give you a plug, if you don't mind. Anyone doing business in Broward yeah. County, Florida, contact Sherry Rudolph at Legally Clean because stop cleaning your own place. <laughs> That's what she does for a living. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. I, I truly appreciate that. <laughs> you are most welcome. You're most welcome. All right. Beautiful. Thank you, Sherry. All right. Uh, Darlene. Yes. I am so thankful that I was able to be in, I call this class. Mm. Today was a class. This was a session, a class session, a master class. And um, I put in the chat about um, the time when you t said that it's going to squeeze us first. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you're squeezing out the limitations to embrace the freedom Ooh. that you actually get. Squeezing out the limitations to embrace the freedom. Ah, oh, wonderful. Yeah. I love yeah. it. And I know that I had been doing that before, but I got away from it. And when I got away from it, just the things that you said, that we get frustrated mm -hmm. and all of those things, I, that, was me, that was me. And so today was a call to action to get back into this. So, so my question is, and I know maybe it might come up in discussion later, um, in terms of adding uh, chat GBT AI mm -hmm. in this, in terms of content We're creation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, and let me say this, that there's lots of tools available right now and we want to be mindful to use them effectively without getting pulled in the rabbit hole. So yes. definitely keep a little timer by your side because it's very easy to play in Jet GPT or Mid Journey or the many, many tools. So make sure you set yourself a timer. Um, going in Chat GPT goes on to the content creation category. Yes, thank you. 
and here's what I'm going to tell you. Using it effectively is going to save you so much time and increase your productivity. Um, it's, it's all about using the right prompts for the thing that you want and getting it to sound like you. And, and I'll, I'll just say, um, were you able to be on the class that I did last Friday with Ronnie Tsunami? No, I was out of town. It was really good. So um, Susan is going to put a link in the chat. Um, go okay. ahead and register for it, even though it passed. Okay. Uh, you'll, get, you, you'll get sent to the replay of it. It was really, really good on how to more effectively use the AI tools. Okay. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. And, and I got mine. <laughs> congratulations. Yes. And I, and I want to say um, thank you for sharing. Like I used to do these things and now today's a call to action. And this happens for all of us. Um, when you notice you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed and, and really crunched and pinched and squeezed like we've been talking about, a couple of things that I, I want to give as a tip. Number one is it happens to all of us. There are new pressures. There's new challenges you know, life happens, as we say, and the key is always about awareness and, and where our attention and our energy is. So just become more and more observant of your own behavior and your energy uh, and your attitude. And when you notice that think you're feeling crunched more often than you'd like to be, um, know that that's a signal for two things. Number one, become aware of your language and your relationship with time. Have you fallen out of habit with some of the things that we talked about today and that are included in the stop the clock time management teaching? Have you fallen out of habit with those? And that can happen when we hang around people who are not like us and they're using language all the time who can pick it up. You know, I, I I pick up accents, I pick up tones, I pick up language patterns from people very easily. So I need to be vigilant and observing myself. So it's okay if it happens, just become aware. The second thing is that if you notice, you do your block scheduling, as I've suggested, and you notice it's not quite working, then it's time to readjust. And, and here's what I, what, what I want to uh, share about that. So for example... When you first set up your block scheduling as a solopreneur with these categories that I've given you, um, maybe you don't have enough client fulfillment, or maybe you have the 10, uh, the 25 percent of client fulfillment maxed out. Now you have more clients because your sales and marketing is so good. You may be like, oh, no, what am I going to do? I have to work more hours. We just have to reapportion things. And maybe that's when you add somebody on the team to do social media for you or to do your marketing so that you can do more client fulfillment. When you notice that you're feeling squeezed or, or pinched in your time, that's when you need to, um, or not need, correction, Nancy, that's when you want to take a look at your schedule, do a little time study, and then reapportion things because as your business grows, the functions are going to shift just a little bit. And I do that probably twice a year. I have to um, restructure my schedule. I get to restructure my schedule. Thank you for my self-check and see I'm human. I need to check it in out also. All right, <laughs> let me go to. So thank you, Pastor Darlene, and congratulations for getting the bundle. Um, Dion Blackwell. Good morning. Um, Nancy, this has been phenomenal for me. I am really a master of time management, but sometimes that can be bad because I find myself being too extremely focused and I have to learn the balance. That's where you want to put your time off in your schedule. That's uh, yeah. That yeah. <laughs> um, we're sisters in that because I needed to learn that too. Like, because I we love what we do. It's easy. Yeah. <laughs> it, right? I get so just, you know, just so enthralled with what I'm doing and, and that perfection side and making sure I complete the task because I don't like coming back to things. Which but you laying out um, this process, this, this strategy around sales, how much time to spend there marketing, I think will be a great value for me. Yeah, categorizing these. I, I think that I, I'm doing these things, but I didn't realize I was doing these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now it gives me that focal point of paying more attention of how I am developing and designing my now my self care. I definitely put my spiritual and self care in my calendar. 
Beautiful. And and yeah. now you're going to add some playtime. Oh, yeah. Playtime is now. Oh, when I have playtime this weekend because some friends of mine came to a conference in Dallas. And so we spent the weekend I'm recovering from the, we thinking we were 26 years old, staying up all night. You know, <laughs> <last time. laughs> oh yeah, there's that. <laughs> but I'm on my way to a massage this morning. Oh, good and for you. And a flotation this afternoon. So today is my self-care, but they change. They're not always the same day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a okay. Friday. Sometimes it's a Saturday, you know. And and so awesome, and it sounds like you're really good at managing your time and making sure you do all the functions of the business. So kudos to you for building in the time for yourself. I love that. Love that. Yes. Good job. Awesome. Um, and I want to add just one little bit of um, suggestion on top of that. Sometimes... As business owners, and again, this is the reason that you want to use these percentages that I gave you and really map it into your calendar, because like when I first went into business for myself, I was my own boss for the first time. There was nobody telling me what to do. Well, <laughs> I also didn't know the structure of it. So I would give myself afternoons off and I would give myself mornings off and four hour lunches. And then I'm like, oh, how come I don't have any clients? Well, because I was actually being too nice of a boss to myself and not making sure all the functions of the business got done. So notice that. The other thing I'm going to uh, drop in here real quick is that when you have the block scheduling done, particularly for your sales conversations and your follow-up calls with people, I want you to set upon, you know, it's going to be 10 hours a week and I'm going to do two hours every day, something like that, and stagger them for mornings, afternoons. And I can help you on all of that if you want to on how to apply it for you and your business. And when you do so, it prevents something that I refer to as the entrepreneurial chase. So, best laid plans. I'm going to spend this morning. I'm going to do marketing this afternoon. I'm going to do sales. Then tomorrow I'm going to do copy creation. Like you got your plan all set. And then your phone rings and it's somebody who wants to talk to you right now that minute about maybe hiring you. So you drop everything you're doing. Your plan goes out the window because you're chasing the money. Whereas they could call you and you could call them back quickly and say, oh, great, I'd love to have this conversation with you. Or you send them a text message and say, hey, I'm booked right now. Can we talk tomorrow morning at 10 or this afternoon at 4? It also shows them that, number one, you're not coming from an energy of desperation, but that you're a confident, structured business owner, that you have you're busy in your business and you have plans and you have structure set up. So be mindful of the entrepreneurial chase where just because the phone rings, you drop everything. And now your plan for your business gets thrown out the window. When you plan in advance, you can run everything better. All right, let me go to our next caller, uh, Kayeda. And I hope I say, I'm say i saying that correctly. Actually, you are. I was shocked when you first said it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. Well, welcome. Yeah, it's an honor. It's, it's a blessing to even be on the call. I, it's not in my schedule. I am an av avid scheduler, but I um, blocked off this time to be at the hospital with my friend. So I, I had some downtime and I was just reviewing some stuff and, and the um, text came across and I said, hmm. Let me just hop in here. And I am so glad. I'm so blessed. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of confirmations. I am an avid uh, Google Calendar uh, <laughs> scheduler. I time block. I've been doing it for years. And I teach people to do it as well. My question to you is, can you hear me? Um, I can I'm hear you. I'm, I'm you leaning in so that I can hear you better. So, But we're good. Um, and I'm going to step out. Um, my question is, so my my business has a two sides. So there's a product and service side, and then there's a uh, building where I uh, train, coach, and develop um, people to do what I do, right? Okay. Um, and so when you broke down the, you know, the percentages, the five different percentages and the 20%, 
I know you said the twenty uh, percent for client fulfillment and ten percent for um, planning, learning, and mentoring. Mm-hmm. So I want to know with me, do you have some suggestions or, or or another formula for that, or should I consider my team, my downline as part of my clients as well? Does that kind of blur the line? It's a, a little a bit. Lot of, yeah. So so okay. a little, um and and so are you in a um um network marketing kind of company or direct sales? Well, I'm in financial services. Okay. So we're not a network marketing, but the, the compensation for profit compensation plan um, allows me to get overrides and residual right. profits. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, so what you want to be taking a look at is you still want to have, you know, for you, for your personal production, as well as your team building, you still want to make sure that you stay in that 25% of your time on sales conversations. Okay. Um, okay. The 10% that I talked about for me- measuring and mentoring, that's actually you measuring your results. It's your planning process, not necessarily mentoring. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. For gotcha. you, and okay. more continuous okay. development and focus on your working on your business instead of in your business. In your business. Right. Okay. So, so that's what that is. Now, where I would put um, team building, because part of your sales and production are going to come from team building. If you wanted to, I would probably reduce the content creation piece and put that under team building or take a little bit out of marketing because they're your team members in this business. They're actually part of your marketing arm. So I would actually adjust the time there to do my leadership of the people on my team because they're actually your marketing part of your marketing department. Absolutely. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, So glad that it worked out for you to be here today. And let me um, just put the link in the chat. Give me one moment. And this is master time. Um, sending prayers to you and your friend. I know that you did mention that you were in the hospital. So sending love and prayers your way. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, all right. Let's go to Dr. Roz. Bring it, girl. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You are loved, appreciated, celebrated, valued, and most cherished. Thank I you. had to multi be multifaceted this morning. So I didn't get to hear, but I knew the topic and you know, that's what I came to the team with when I first met you. So haven't mastered it, well, in the progress of mastering. So I'm going to be looking forward to the replay. I have a question and that's when we, when um, I did, I did do the sign up, but I always like to read first. And when, if I don't read and I move on and do my 27 or the 297, then it leaves. So just, it's not going to. I can read it first and then go click on the next step of that. Yes. Yeah. Take okay. time with it. And, and it says 45 minutes for the video. I just didn't want to lose it. Um, no. And I'll send you a reminder too, okay. so that if you want to look at what the next step is later, you'll get another email in the Okay. Seat. Good deal. Well, I just want to say, you know, it's always awesome. I was over here. I it's so funny. It was almost like I could read your lips while I was on my other call. And I'm just looking and the person's like, are you OK? And I didn't realize that I was off a, a mute while they were trying to look at some work for me. But I was looking at you and your hands and all of that, getting all excited. So I, I was just- like, thank you. Thank you, Lord. But this is this. I know this is going to be awesome. I always get excited because Dion is back. She's been back a while, but um, I, I just, I'm so thankful that I hear her voice and excitement and the shift. She's yeah. going to be leaving me, leaving Texas, going back to her homeland where she's comfortable in Chi Town. So, but I, I just, I just understand it. And what more than for Darlene, you are squeezing out the limitations. Oh, that was so and good. Embrace. Yeah. That is so good. But I love you, Nancy, Nancy, Nancy. Susan Wiener, I don't know how we can get the chat. This was a good one. Oh, my God. This was a good one. <laughs> so I love you, my sister. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So glad that you're here. Thank you for sending people that you love and care about to our community and uh, trusting us and taking care of them. So yes. I love you right back. And we are at the top of the hour. So I'm going to go ahead and um, round out this Women's Prosperity Network Wow Wednesday with one final reminder for all of you. Remember that each and every one of us gets the same 1,000 440 minutes every day. The only difference between those you see experiencing a wonderful quality of life with joy and happiness and peace is not in how much time we're given, but how we spend the time that we have. So spend it wisely, stay focused on love, stay focused on people, and we'll see you again next week for another Wow Wednesday. Bye, everyone. Have a beautiful day. Love you. Love you too. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.